When I was entering middle school, I was told this was going to be the hardest time of my life. Then, as I transitioned into high school, I was told that this was going to be an extremely difficult time and I need to be prepared for it. And then finally, as I entered university to study engineering, I was told that this is going to be a lot of work and it's probably going to be the most difficult thing that I ever have to face. Who gave me this advice? My teachers and guidance counselors. And looking back, I realized that this advice is pretty awful because all it does is scare you for no reason and it doesn't give you any concrete value for things that you can do to actually help you prepare. So in this video, I'm going to give you four things that I didn't know as an engineering student that help prepare you for university or college. Now, hear me out. Studying is essential and it's definitely not something you want to neglect, but socializing and building connections can go a long way in helping you find a job for an internship or for a, you know, a job after you graduate. Let me give you an example. Let's say there's a particular company you want to work for and it just so happens that one of your classmates works at that company. If you're buddies back in school, he'll likely refer you, greatly increasing your chance of getting the job. Now, other than just finding a job, when you socialize with others, it makes your time in engineering a little bit more fun and a lot less stressful. Let me give you an example. When you're confused on a particular topic in engineering, and trust me, you will be, just knowing that other people are just as confused will make studying a lot less daunting and you'll all work together to figure it out. When you're in school, you're going to want to get internships and you're going to want to get a full-time job. However, other than just having a good resume, having a solid portfolio goes a long way in helping you get that particular job. And in your portfolio, you're going to want to include your school, work, or personal projects. And you should really tailor these projects to match the description of the jobs you're interested in. Your portfolio can be a website or a PDF document that really just showcases your best work. I have a video that outlines how to make a portfolio, so you can check that out to learn more about portfolios. I'll link that video down in the description below. Ideally, your portfolio will feature your sharpest, most impressive 5 to 10 pieces of work. Undoubtedly, someone pursuing your resume won't really have time to, you know, look over uh, more than just 5 to 10 pieces of work. And if your first couple of projects are impressive enough, they really shouldn't need to. Another thing to include in your portfolio is your creative process, as it really allows your employer to determine whether you're capable of handling the scope of the work. Basically, the reason having a portfolio is really, really important is because it establishes your legitimacy as an engineer worth hiring. However, if you don't have really much work to put on your portfolio, this brings me to my third point, which is get hands-on experience. When you're just starting out, quantity is a lot more important than quality. I know this may sound a little absurd because I'm sure you've always heard the phrase quality over quantity, However, quality is purely subjective. When you're just starting out, it's better to work on eight projects in four months rather than just one project in four months because with more repetitions, you get a lot better. And, you know, at the end of the day, what's really more important is that you're pushing yourself to the max. When you're studying engineering, you can expect to study for like 10 hours and take 20 pages of notes only to have something as simple as unit conversions mess you up on the exam. Yeah, that's happened to me a lot. Don't throw out your notes at the end of the term or year. You should keep them for your entire university education because you never know what information might become useful later on in the term or later on in your engineering education. If you keep all your notes well organized, you'll save yourself a lot of time and effort. I'll be honest with you, most of what you learn in class you won't really use when you actually start working. Uh, but if my engineering course has taught me something, is really how to problem solve and how to learn on my own. These were the two biggest things that I learned that I really take with me to any job that I have. At work, I won't ever be asked to use something like Crank Nicholson's forward differencing approximation method to numerically solve the heat equation and other partial differential equations, but wouldn't that be cool? Hey, Tamer, one of our clients urgently needs us to solve the heat equation using Crank Nicholson's forward difference approximations. If we don't get this done ASAP, this will cost us millions of dollars. Don't worry, sir. I got this. The countless hours that I spent doing my problem sets for my ordinary differential equations course will definitely come in handy. I won't let you down, sir. Make sure to use central differencing and backward differencing and show all your work. There's so much writing on this. Uh huh. Oh my god, NASA? I'll let him know immediately, Mr. President. Mm hmm. If you don't get this heat equation right, then you're telling me we won't be able to destroy the asteroid coming for Earth and all human life will cease to exist? 
Oh, whoa. You know what, sir? I'll do it for my country. Good thing I still have my calculus notes. You better get right on it. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's what I thought engineering was going to be like when I was younger. In reality, it just involves your manager giving you tasks that require you to be resourceful, problem solve, and learn on your own. To summarize, the four things that I wish I knew when I first started studying engineering are to socialize a lot more, start my portfolio as soon as possible, get hands-on experience, and take good notes and hold on to them. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!